Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again from Expo West, the Weinig Holzer showroom in Anaheim, California. Just another episode or another presentation from our open house that we have going on here uh, today and tomorrow. We've been highlighting some of the machines that we have on exhibit here, and we wanted to bring to you today just a little presentation on two of the models of edge banders that we have here in the showroom. I'm working with Carlos this afternoon, and Carlos is gonna talk us through some of the features and some of the really unique uh, options that are available on these edge banders. So the first one that we're standing in front of here, Carlos, this is which model? It's a 1057 streamer, one of our uh, uh, most popular models. Uh, it has the standard uh, touch uh, control where it's on off and this is one of our stand uh, most popular models simply because it's very simple to use right so this one has literally you can see on the control panel here it literally has a button for every station every unit it's either on or it's off there's no programmability to it you just manually select the stations that you want operate the machine if you need to change something you have to manually make an adjustment but it's very simple it's very easy and uh, it works quite well and then the next one that we're going to step up to which you can see behind carlos this is our 1329 which has the full touch screen monitor completely programmable fully servo controlled thing machine but we're going to start here but carlos before we go much farther tell us about what are the stations that are on this machine so that we know what is some of its capabilities might be the stations on this machine start with pre-milling which has become very very popular people using cnc's saws or when they leave their boards floating around for a long time and they need to trim the edge the glue jet the heart of our system which has been in every single machine that we sell and this glue jet system similar to that one except for maybe because that has a servo control but right. nonetheless the internal yeah. of this machine is exactly right. the same as anything the, else the one other that has a hopper where you can feed multiple cartridges this is a single cartridge at a time yeah. but as far as the function of it, it's exactly the same internally it's Hopefully the different. same same right. system mm -hmm. so in this particular case we do not go from our high-end machine to our entry-level machines and say we're taking right it's the same the same we so. don't downsize or downgrade it just because it's a smaller model yeah, exactly. the same blue station so under the hood we'll lift the hood here you can see some of the units on here <clears throat> we have a two motor uh, snipping unit here Main trim it automatically uh, turns when you do three and four these uh top and bottom trimmer the thing about this machine that makes it so popular it's pneumatic so if you're doing thin tape and let's say two mil you have two positions on the switch, you hit the button, it right. automatically goes into position. You don't have to open the hood to do two different types of edge banding. So there is some automation here, so it's not 100% manual. Yep. We have pneumatic cylinders that'll shift so we can cut with a different part of the knife on the, on the cutter head. So a little combination of manual with some automation exactly. involved in this machine. Here's a next then, station then here. Then we have a single motor corner rounder. And the, again, this one is an on off switch. Turn it on there when you run a corner rounder. Turn it off when you're not running it. Right. Scrapers, profile scraper, same way pneumatic. Buffers and a uh, flat scraper for the glue line. The one thing about this machine that companies do is because it is a two position machine, they will go ahead and build a sheet that says, take a picture of that when you run thin tape, these are where the switches go. Right. When you run uh, two mil, this is where the switches go. So it's very simple. And, and here in Southern California, our workforce is pretty transient. So Dan may be running the machine here today, today. Here today, somebody it's else tomorrow. tomorrow. It's someone else and who's up there. But with the cheat sheet, you don't have to worry about them being able to do Just a little cheat things. sheet that shows a visual representation of the position of the switches, where to put them for the different types of banding that you want to do. Yeah. I think the one thing that we really want to focus in today, we could spend a lot of time going through each of the stations and each of the units on this machine. But the one thing that really separates a Holzer Edge Bander from every other brand of Edge Bander in the marketplace is our glue station and the function and the way that it, glue, that it uses. We use a glue cartridge. You can see some examples here. These are the cartridges that we use. They come in different colors. It's all the same, it's just different colored glue. And the one thing that really separates us is the fact that from the time we turn the edge bander on till we can run the first panel is less than three minutes. There's no heat up time, 15, 20, 
Well, we had a customer here this morning that told me he has to wait 30 minutes from the time he turns on his edge bander before he can run the first part. And that's real typical with the machines that use glue pots. We don't use a glue yep. pot. We're not heating up all of the glue before we even can run the first part. We're only melting the glue that we need when we need it. So the glue isn't sitting in there all liquid melting, waiting for us to run apart and then cool it off because we didn't use it, turn it back on tomorrow, heat the same glue up again. So we're only using the glue as we need. And the other thing that's real beneficial, we can run different colors very easily. I have a, a brown cartridge here, white. We have, uh, I think, a, a natural cartridge in the system or we can even switch to PUR yes. glue which is very popular and very important in our uh, market today the ability to do PUR glue with no modifications no additional units or anything okay. added to the machine we literally take the cartridge we're using out of the glue system we put the PUR cartridge in there and we purge it and then literally just about five minutes or so we're up and running uh, the new glue in this case yeah. PUR whatever it is and, and purging is done here uh, with it with a button there automatically but all the purging is done in this tray so you don't have any kind of messes if you ever try to clean the glue pot to try to change the color to take the PUR out you got to take the glue pot out you got to take a bunch of newspapers put them mm -hmm. down put gloves on, do all these things to it's be a able process. to clean that. It's a process. It's a long process. Here, it's a matter of pushing a button and watching it purge. And in the other machine with the touch control, you can actually do it automatically. So we're going to switch. Uh, I'm not sure what color we're using it, in here There's now. black in there right now. There's black in there? Okay. Yeah. So we're going to just switch to another color. Yep. We have our best Yvonne. edge banner technician, Yvonne, here with us today. We're going to start the process here and uh, purge the glue out of this machine and while it's purging so we don't just have to stand here for a couple of minutes watching it purge uh, we can do that so you can see there's a selector switch here on the control panel that Yvonne has holding over and that's purging the glue that's in there so you can if there's not much of the cartridge left that's in there you can take it out yeah. and put another one behind it there's still going to be a little bit that needs to be purged out of there and so we can if we come around you can see here underneath you can see the old glue coming out. It's just purging. It just goes into this tray right here. And then when we're finished, we just take and throw it away. You can see that if this was PUR glue, again, you can tell when you see the new color coming out that you have the new cartridges in there. It's all purged and we're ready to go with the new color. So we're going to purge this a little bit and then drop a new cartridge in there. And then you'll see the new color. I think the black will come out right after this. It's yeah. already in and place. And that's how you know when, when you've got all the old color of glue out and you're ready to run the new the new color or new type of glue that you put in while he's purging that you can see this this is part of the glue nozzle application here so our glue height is controlled by the the pressure beam location so as we raise and lower the pressure beam it opens or closes the glue nozzle so that we only get the glue on the edge of the panel based on the thickness we don't get extra glue on the top or extra glue on the bottom. It only opens up exactly to match the pressure beam and therefore we don't have any issues with, with that. So uh, we're getting close. Oh yep. yeah, it's starting. Getting close. Yeah, you can see the colors changing a little bit down there already. With the, uh, see it's getting dark. You see the black cartridge coming out. You see the, see the color change in there. It's kind of a mix right now between the opaque or the natural color and the black cartridge that's in there. Uh, which can be really beneficial. The fact that you can change glue colors very quickly and very easily is important because sometimes it's really nice to match the color of the glue with the color of the banding and the color of the panel and then you just literally have this invisible glue line. So you can see the uh, glue coming out. It's almost solid black now. We've about All that old cartridge is just about uh, extruded out through there and yet yeah, it looks like that's just about 100% black. And as soon as we see that, we can uh, we can easily just take a panel and run it through there yeah. and do a, a, a simple glue test and put nothing but glue on the edge of the board. And we can look at it and say, yep, that looks great. And then begin our production with it. So uh, Yvonne's covering up the cartridge. I think it's all set, ready to go there. So uh, that that in a nutshell is really all that's required, whether you're changing from white to black, one color of glue to another color of glue, we're good, ready to go? Yep. Yeah, so that's it. So we just 
In that time period right there, we just changed Change colors. from one color of glue to another. It's that quick, that simple. And by the same token, if that was PUR, we could have changed from EVA to PUR that easily. So it's, it's really nice. It's a big benefit. Uh, no extra accessories to go with the machine. Yeah. Everything's the same. So this machine is all manual. You see all the buttons we talked about here. We're going to walk. This is the 1057. We're going to just move right over here to the 1329 and uh, see the difference between the controller. Now the 1329 has many of the same units. It's got pre-milling, glue station, pressure section, end trim, top corner and bottom flush them. trim, yeah. corner rounding, all the same units. But the difference over here is the way we control all these units. Uh, every unit on this machine has some sort of a servo motor for positioning, controlling the copy wheel or the uh, side copy shoes, sure. the position of the cutter head, the motor. It's all servo controlled. So maybe Carlos, you could talk a little bit about the controller and the programming yep. and so, how that works. So when you look at that, we talked about the 1057 having the two positions of being able to go from thin tape to two mil back and forth. This is gives you the ability to do a variety of different components. One mil, 1.3, two mil, three mil by programs. So you can pull the program out of the material that you're running through and be able to pull it out. And you can also write these programs for specific glues because with our machines, since we don't use a glue pot, we use air pressure. We can uh, write programs for certain viscosities, certain temperatures, certain speeds that the glue works at and have them stored in this and be able to just call those out when we need them instead of having to try to figure out with 10 pieces right. what happens at the so end. One thing that Carlos mentioned was the fact, I think we have a question, read the question, um, is the volume of glue, how much glue is applied? We can control that by the cylinder that's pushing the cartridge into the heating element. The, uh, the more pressure we put on it, the more glue that comes out, the less, less glue, so we can control the thickness and the volume of glue by the pressure. So it's real simple, you can see on the screen here, I don't know if you can see from the camera back there, but we build a library of programs here, all the different types of edge banding, thin mill, uh, thin PVC, with a bevel, flush, radius, whatever it might be, we'll have a library of all these programs, then all the operator has to do is select the program that he wants, it's a touch screen as you can tell, there's a folder right here, we're gonna take the program out of the folder and load the machine. And so each, you can probably see these, each of these flashing green lights on the screen, each one of those buttons represent a unit on the machine. We would go through during the setup process of tweaking and dialing that unit in mm -hmm. and that station, getting it just the way we like it. And then once we've done that, then we're gonna save that program, give it a name that we recognize and it's very simple and very easy. So once you build your library of programs, then operating the machine becomes real simple. It doesn't matter whether I run it, Carlos run no. it, whoever. Uh, once I load that program, put the correct edge banding in the magazine, and then I feed the machine. So it becomes real simple. And it takes a lot of that operator involvement out of the process. Because each individual operator, sometimes they have their own little way yeah. that they like to set the machine up. And this eliminates all that. It's all kind of controlled here. Then we can also, on the screen, you can see right here, this box right here is for this specific program. It tells you how many parts have been run on that program, how many, uh, how much time was run with that program, and then the length. If we add all the parts together, this is how much. And then underneath here is the total of the life of the machine. So this machine, for example, it's brand new. We just set it up last week or this week. Do we set this one in? This, this Not too long. It's got 189 parts have been fed through the machine and two hours and 37 minutes and it's 82 meters and 886 millimeters. That's the total life of this machine. So it's a great tool because we give uh, recommendations for maintenance procedures based on time. And so this is a running time right here of the life of the machine. So let's just take kind of walk down the machine a little bit here. You can see uh, if Christian can bring the camera over here. We can look at some of these things. Carlos maybe can kind of talk us through what we're looking at here, we got a, I got a little spray nozzle at the front there, maybe explain that to the people watching. Yeah, this machine is been set up to run all kinds of different banding, including uh, high gloss banding. And when you start running high gloss banding in the PUR, you need to lubricate the parts to keep the film from, from sticking. So we start off with a spray system to be able to have a parting agent lubrication right there. 
before it goes to the pre-mill so it can cut off the stuff that's sprayed on the edges. Goes through the uh, glue jet with the Cinco, which is the only one of its kind again in, our, in the industry. This is synchronized with the speed of the belt so that you don't have a wheel trying to, to spin that and slip. It automatically synchronizes with the speed of the belt, puts it through. This is all servo driven, so once you set up the program, your pressure zone is put into place. Your pressure on your uh, air is, is already uh, done because it has what we call the itronic, where everything that runs under pressure, once you write the program and tell it what those uh, bars should be for that particular program, automatically sets all the pneumatics as well. Uh, t uh, snipping unit again, two motor snipping unit. You can, you can open it up. Okay. Now we start getting into a unit that's got one, two, three, four, five, six servos. So you can have infinitely variety of where you want these motors to be in position for the different parts that you're running. Again, all driven by a program. So once you set it up through the control, you save it. Next time you need to run that part, all these servos will put those stations back to the exact same spot. Let me just take a minute here. Can you see this real good on the camera? This tool is part of, this machine has what we call our multi-tool package on it. So if you see this cutter head, you see each of these, individual, there's four different profiles on each of these knives. What this cutter head does, it will rotate each one of these individually so that we can cut with a different profile and it's all controlled with this servo. And so the flush trim, the corner rounding and the scraping unit are all using a multi-profile tool like this where we have four different profiles that we can work with and then we can cut all the same. It makes it real easy when I'm in a given day, if I'm changing from one type of banding to the next, constantly changing over this multi-tool is really valuable and very beneficial. It saves a lot of time and makes it real easy. All right, Carlos. Yeah, if you're a custom, if you're a custom kitchen uh, manufacturer, every kitchen that comes through might require a whole different profile whole different uh, color, whole different edging. It might require high gloss, not high gloss, wood, laminate. And you can change all that right. with the programs and that allows you to do any kind of profile you have. Now we have a two motor corner rounding, same thing, servo driven. So those tools are in that machine, in yep. these stations right here. So it changes automatically. The one nice thing about you having a sec, uh, two motor servos is that you can use it as a fine trim. Mm -hmm. And when you do a corner, instead of trying to match two edges to two corners, it goes completely around the corner and gives you the same cut quality all the way around the product. So one it's, thing that Carlos just mentioned, the fine trim. So our first trimming station here would kind of trim it close, yep. and then we can use this two motor corner round to, do, to put the second trim and get the final cut, even without doing the corners. Yeah, even but, without doing the but corners. But it could do the corners with it yep. if it wanted to, but it doesn't have to every time. So you got a lot of versatility and a lot of flexibility with this station as far as different types of banding. Then we have the uh, radius scraping. Again, same thing, four servo. different radiuses. Yep. Servo driven, matches with the, you know, theoretically, you could cut a three mil here and scrape it with one mil. Not that you would, but that's the versatility you have with the machine is that you can program all of these to do all these things like that. So whatever your custom job is, you can find some way to edge band it with this machine. You can't really see it. It's kind of buried back in there, just a flat finish scraper and then followed by the buffing. So this machine is really versatile. It's a high production machine, uh, 12, 16 hours a day, no problem for this machine to run. A lot of different types of edge banding applications, fully programmable, fully adjustable with all the servos. When you begin running this machine, there's no, nothing underneath the hood that you'd ever have to lift and make a manual adjustment. It's all uh, servo controlled. You'd build your library of programs here in the controller select the program that you want, and then load it and begin. So it's really uh, very easy to operate, but really gives you a lot of different choices when it comes to edge banding, and a great, a great choice. In, in the range of products that Holter sells on the edge banders, this 1057, there's one in the middle called a 1308, and this one, these are the three most popular models of edge banders that we sell, just because of what they do and how they do it and really meets most of our customers' needs and applications. So we encourage you, if you're in the area, we'll be here the rest of today and all day again tomorrow. If you're interested in something that you've seen, please stop by and talk to us. We would love to see you. 
and look forward to uh, maybe speaking with some of you over the next day. Thank you for watching today. And Thank you. Have a great afternoon.